Today, we're going to use different grays, warm and cool grays, in order to create volume in a clear cup. Let's get started. All right, so I know this is not the flashiest thing in the world to do. You know, if this was a lot of different colors, it would be, um, well, probably more enticing and interesting to paint. But where I am right now is I'm very interested in neutrals and in grays and also in temperature, warm and cool temperatures. And so I have this clear glass cup and I wanted to enter the Daily Paintworks challenge of the month, which is to incorporate a heart or some sort of Valentine's Day thing. So I'm going to put a heart in the middle of the bottom of this cup. But the first thing I have to do is create warm and cool grays. Now the warm grays have quite a bit of yellow in them, and you can see that, and the cool grays tend to have blue in them, um, ultramarine blue to be specific. So I know they're looking, um, the other thing that I'm trying to do, I, I should also say, is wherever I do see color, if I can find a color spot of value, see there's cerulean blue there, there's a little bit of alizarin crimson in my gray there, could definitely see color in the cup where that bit of pink is, which is a reflection from a, a glass that's, that's beyond the frame. So I'm putting those in first, just establishing what's warm, what's cool, what has color, and what is a neutral. Now I'm looking at the darks, and the darks have quite a bit of color in them. You can see there's a lot of red in that. Even on the photograph, you can see that. They're, because I think there's a red vase, like I said, out of the frame. And that is, um, is going to influence the clearness of the glass, because glass is transparent. It's really not there, except for how it, it um, reacts to things around it. So now, like I said, I'm trying to look for any kind of color that I can find. If I see that my gray is bending into something that looks warmer, then I'm going to add some yellow to it or maybe some orange. You can see the orange there because that's what I'm seeing in the photograph. I'm not matching exactly what's happening in the photograph, but I am trying to match value to the uh, different patches that I see of, um, what am I trying to say, the value to patches of lights and darks that I see. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. And this is this is kind of hard to do. I mean, it should be easy to do, but it's not because um, I don't want to end up with a gray cup. I want to have a cup that has as much color as it's possible to have in it. And at the same time, I'm conscious of the fact that everything has to be somewhat neutralized in gray because I have a, a clear cup on a white piece of paper. Nothing could be kind of clearer and grayer than that. So, um, you know, I know I set up a challenge for myself that's really hard, and I like it right here. I almost feel like this was right where I had it, but um, do you have, sometimes feel that way in paintings? You feel like, gosh, you're, you're, you're only halfway in, but your concentration's been going really well, and every decision you've made so far has been a pretty good one. Um, this is kind of what I find is like the most dangerous part of a painting because this is where um, where you can overthink, which I probably start doing around here. But I felt like I had to overthink because I didn't have the um, I didn't have the structure of the cup yet, and so I knew that I, I needed to do some more work in order to do that. Now the other thing is this is an um, um, what do I want to say? This is a cold press um, arch paper that is eight by eight inches. I started with a 20 inch brush, which is a really big brush. And now I think I've dropped down to about a 16 inch brush. And I kind of like what I have right here. And this is often the case. I'll go away in a minute and dry it and come back and, and try to put in some of um, the relatively darks that, dark darks that I see. And we'll see whether this thing holds up or not. And I know that the heart was imagined, and you know, that's an art artist's prerogative. You can imagine something if you want to. And I've done enough uh, glass objects with lollipops in them now that I know um, what happens if you put a dark red thing in the bottom of a cup. I kind of know how it's going to react to, to the, um, the different surfaces around it. So I thought it was about done here, and then I said to myself, no, go and dry it, and then come back and reevaluate. Although I have to admit, I kind of like it right here. Ding dang, that does happen. All right, but I'm back and dialing in some of my darks because I just didn't feel like I had um, 
you can see from the photograph, there's some really substantial darks there and almost, almost no whites. So that's, that's what I'm trying to figure out here. Where are my darks and what do I need to leave relatively white? Because like I said, nothing is actually what left white. So I'm going to need to compensate for all of that. That looks pretty good right there. I wonder why I felt like I had to keep going. You know, one of the things that happens here is I drop now down to probably a size 14 brush. And you probably know you start getting persnickety the smaller the brush gets. And maybe I should have stayed with a bigger brush. I don't know. I kind of like this as a, a, a challenge. Um, I'm going to respond to the challenge with this painting because I feel pretty good about it. But I'm going to try again. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint's wet, mask for value, mix for color, and do entertain mixing neutrals because um, you can get a lot of color in them. And if you can, that will enhance kind of the other paintings that you do. It just makes you a better viewer of your subject. And I'll see you next time. Okay, bye-bye.